anything can make life better for me, make it faster, and get me the results I want quicker, I'm going to love. Absolutely kicking myself that I haven't been using DXO Pure Raw 2 all along. Yeah, it, it's, it's no part of my workflow. It's as simple as that. It is no part of my workflow. So today we're going to be looking at DXO Photo Raw 2 as a Lightroom plugin to see how well it works. Is it worth it? And just what does it do? And I'm also going to be comparing DXO Photo Raw 2 to Topaz Photo AI to see which one is better, why, and all that jazz. So um, let's get into it and see what it's all about. I have a photograph here that I shot on a Nikon Z7 Mark II at ISO 25600, which is stupidly high. Now, the reason why I picked this picture is there is a lot of noise in the photograph itself. So I want to, I want to play around with it and see how we can reduce that noise in different textures. So first we're gonna look at it in DxO Pure Raw 2 and see what happens there. After that, then I'm gonna pop exactly the same photograph into Topaz Photo AI and we're gonna be looking at two things. We're gonna be looking at results. So the results are gonna be down to image sharpness, noise reduction, and then we're gonna be looking at speed, which is also going to be incredibly important. So here I am now in Lightroom. And as I was saying, there's some lovely textures across all this here now. So what we're gonna do is, we're just quite simply going to go up here to File. We're gonna go down here to Plugin Extras. And when I click on this then, you're gonna see all the different options. Pure Raw 2 is here. So when I click on this, what it's now gonna do is, it's gonna send it over to Pure Raw 2. Once the, the, the pop-up box appears here now, we just need to put in a few settings first. So first it's gonna ask you what raw processing method do you want to use? There's a number of different options. We've got HQ, Prime, and Deep Prime. Now does DxO optical corrections, and the one thing I have to say is, DxO have some of the best camera and lens up correction software out there. Really been blown away by it in Photolab 6. So we're gonna see how well it works here because I actually, I actually only recently got this software and I'm kind of kicking myself as to why I haven't been using it all along as a plugin in Lightroom. But, um. Come on, let's 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 see what the other options are. So the format: Do you want to do you want to um, look at this or convert it over in JPEG or DNG? I'm not so sure why you'd want to pop it over in JPEG. Being honest, with you. so it's going to be DNG, obviously. Now the destination folder then too as well. We can just change the destination folder. The image is saved. That's fairly straightforward. I'm not going to waste your time in that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on process. So when I click on process here now, it's the box has popped up along here. It's telling me there's about 17 seconds remaining. It's now going to process the image completely for us. So it's going to, Pure Raw 2 is going to work its magic optically and also on the noise reduction side of things. And it's going to edit the photograph for us. And then it's going to bring it back into Lightroom. So we don't have to do anything else. So all of a sudden, I'm really liking this. And this is really working well. So it's, thank you for using Pure Raw 2. Yeah, okay, perfect. And I'm going to click on done here too as well. So what we need to do now is we now need to wait for our image to be re-imported into Lightroom and then we're gonna get our finished article. So that should come true fairly soon now. And here we go, and that is our, that is our finished image. So literally, I did nothing. I just selected where I wanted it to go and where, where I wanted it to come back to. And it's back in Lightroom now. And that took, I don't know, maybe 25, 30 seconds. I wasn't even counting, but I, I'm gonna put a little note down below on the bottom screen here to tell you exactly how long it took. But that was really simple. Now, let's let's have a look at the result. Just looking at that there now, I'm loving the texture on the handle here now. Yeah, that noise is gone. That is, that is practically gone. The background looks really good, nice and soft, nice and smooth. I'm just gonna look at every aspect of the background. Yeah, all looks really good. The fishing line looks good. The felt pad looks good. Yeah, the textured lens cap still looks really good. The grip here looks good, and the thumb wheel, the front thumb wheel, looks good too as well. So um, I didn't have to do anything, and the results are incredibly good because you have to remember this is ISO twenty five thousand six hundred on a forty six megapixel camera that is not known for its high. ISO capabilities. So the results from that, completely and automatic and doing nothing, are absolutely amazing, being honest with you. I'm, I'm literally blown away by that. That is, that is really good. That is really, really good. So what I'm gonna do now next is, I'm gonna go to Topaz Photo AI. And in Topaz Photo AI, I'm gonna do exactly the same photograph with the same settings, and I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna see what the results are like. 
So, um, yeah, let's have a look. Now I have my original photograph open up in Lightroom again. So let's get into it and let's edit this in Topaz Photo AI and see how we get on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just, yeah, that's definitely the original. I'm going to go here on Edit In and we're going to go down to Topaz Photo AI. Edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. So as soon as I click on Edit, which is now, that's when our timer is going to start. So what we're doing now is we're waiting for... Lightroom to export it to Topaz Photo AI. Topaz Photo AI is going to open the image. It's going to do some subject detection. So it's going to try and find the subject inside the image. Then it's going to automatically process the image for us, for us depending on what it thinks is necessary. So um, what it's doing is it is removing noise there now at the moment. And it is preview updated. It has removed the noise. And that is that. So the one thing I will tell you is I can tell you straight away that needs to be sharpened too as well. So I'm just going to click on sharpen and that's going to sharpen that a small bit. And that is a bit better there now. So I'm going to go save to Lightroom Classic. And that is transferring over our photograph to Lightroom. Give it two seconds. Yeah, stop the timer. That's it. That's our final image exported. So uh, as you can see, the background is super smooth. All looks good. No sign of noise anywhere around the place. Super smooth. Yeah, really good job. Awesome job on noise reduction. The one thing I will say here, which straight away I can see is kind of fairly obvious, is the image is not as sharp. So um, let's compare the two of them. Pure Raw 2 image and Topaz Photo AI. So this is the Deep Prime XD results and not even zoomed in. I'm looking at that Tom wheel there. I'm looking at the camera grip and there's a massive difference. So we're going to go to Topaz Photo AI and that just looks soft. That looks incredibly soft. Look at the thumb wheel there. Look at the texture on the grip. Look at everything around the place. There is no comparison. Look at the two of them. So I could be slightly unfair to Topaz Photo AI here because this was just purely a rush test. I didn't go at any sliders and whatnot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to send the original file back to Topaz Photo AI again and see can I sharpen it just that bit better manually. But first I just want to try a speed test. So because the re you might say like, Kieran, that's not important. It bloomin' is because if you have 150 photographs from an event or if you're shooting wildlife and you take, do you know, 40, 50 photographs that you really love. You don't want to be sitting down for five minutes on every photograph editing them. So you can batch edit the whole lot and send them to, to, to let's say, DxO Pure Raw 2. And if it does those 50 photographs in, oh, I don't know, 10 minutes, that's fantastic. But if you have to go into Topaz Photo AI and export each individual photograph to Photo AI and then edit it manually, and if each photograph then takes you two or three times longer, then you're going to go from, let's say, spending 10 minutes to spending half an hour or an hour in each individual photograph. Now, if the results are better, it's blooming worth it. But if the results aren't better, what's the point? So I'm back in my original RAW file here now again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit in and I'm going to fire that over to Topaz Photo AI again. So that is it. It is heading over there now. And yes, we are opening again. Don't show this again. Why didn't I click on that the last time? But anyway, uh, so yeah, subject detection. Everything is running through along here now again. I'm going to put this in the middle there now so we can see it a small bit better. So uh, give it two seconds. Remove noise that is going. It's updating preview here now too as well. And bang, there we have it. As you can see, it is super soft. Everything looks just a bit soft. Even the remove noise, I'm... I'm looking at I'm gonna I'm gonna bring the remove noise back down along a small bit because I don't like that. Yeah. Uh go there maybe. That's looking a small bit better. Um details. Yeah, it's not making a massive difference there now. So what we're gonna do is remove noise. Because again I'm trying to do this reasonably quickly. We're gonna go here to sharpen. And when we're on sharpen here now again, this is our sharpening, so that has sharpened it. But it still doesn't, that looks blurred. And this all looks blurred too as well. So I'm gonna improve this sharpening strength here a bit. We'll whack that up a small bit. And oh yes, there we go. That is now, yeah, that is now after bringing all that up. It's after bringing that up, but it's, look at this section here. Isn't quite right. There is a bit soft too as well. That's better there now. Um, but that all, yeah, that, that looks, 
that does look definitely better. So we're now saving this now back to Lightroom again. And I'm gonna look at the two of them. First thing I'm gonna look at the first two results between the very fast manual edit and the original automatic edit in Topaz Photo AI and see which one is better. Then we're gonna compare ours to DxO Pure Raw 2 and to see how much better that is. Or is it any better at all? Let's have a look. So I actually stopped this review for a couple of minutes because when I saw the results I was getting from DxO Pure Raw 2 and the results I was getting from Topaz Photo AI, I was a bit conflicted. Just being brutally honest, I was a bit conflicted because um, the, the let's say the automated results from Topaz Photo AI weren't as good as the DxO Pure Raw 2. But then we went in and we sharpened it and whatnot and used the AI algorithms in Topaz Photo AI and we got it sharper. Then I compared the two of them in Lightroom and bought the DxO Pure Raw 2 results versus the Topaz Photo AI manually enhanced results. And yeah, I, I, I came across a bit of a problem. I, I'm actually going to show you here now, but I just wanted to explain that this, this probably isn't my initial reaction. It's taken me a couple of seconds to kind of figure out, well, I'm actually sitting here for about five minutes now, trying to figure out which, which one is better. Which, so um, I suppose, so if you ask me, God, Kieran, which one would you use? I, I would probably veer towards DxO Pure Raw 2 for, for a few different reasons. Firstly, it's quite clearly faster. The second thing is, I think the results are more natural. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean here now. So let's first look at the Topaz Photo AI sharpened results versus the unsharp results. So the original edit versus the manual edit. And we're gonna see how much of a difference there is between the two of them. So here we have our original photograph in Topaz Photo AI that was fully automatic. And as I mentioned before, you can quite clearly see it's not that sharp. It really isn't. We have issues around the thumb wheel here. We have issues around the camera grip and whatnot. Whereas now, when I just quickly pop over to the manually edited version, you can see they're night and day. That's the manually edited one. That's the automatic one. So if I zoom in along with this, so this is automatic and that's manual. So that is brilliant. Well done Topaz Photo AI. That is a lot better, especially when you go in and manually edit it. So it just goes to show you can get it better and you can get it sharper. But what's the issue here? <laughs> well, the issue is firstly, I have to manually do it. And now we're going to have a look at Topaz Photo AI manual edit versus the DxO Pure Raw 2 edit. Now, before, before, we, before we look at the manual edit, let's just have a quick look at the original automatic edits in both profiles first. So this is the edit from Topaz Photo AI on fully automatic. Now, this is the edit in DxO Pure Raw 2 fully automatic. So as you can see, the noise is gone on both of them. The texture and lens cap is still there in the DxO Pure Raw 2 and it is sharper. So if I go back now to the Topaz Photo AI, all that texture is gone. It's just vanished. And that is super soft. So again, just looking at this section here, down here and the thumb wheel, when I go back, no comparison. And also here too as well in this area, that's the Topaz Photo AI Auto, and that is manual. So, or that is the DxO Pure Raw 2, sorry. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna go to the manually adjusted one. So before, before you look at the two of these, I, I think this is gonna divide people dramatically for a number of different reasons. But um, let's just have a quick look. This is the DxO Pure Raw 2 results straight out of the automatic edit. And this is Topaz Photo AI. So what's the issue and what's the problem, Kieran? Well, it's, it's, it, it's conflicting me because Topaz Photo AI is sharper. It's sharper in space. Spots, and I specify in spots, but DxO Pure Raw is, is giving us more realistic rendered results. And what I mean by that is, let's have a look at this now again. So when we're looking at DxO Pure Raw 2 here now, you can see the lens cap, the texture in the lens cap is right. It just looks natural. Even the slightly out of focus areas here and whatnot, it all looks natural and it looks right. The metal, everything looks right. When I go to the Topaz Photo AI manually edited shot, which is this one, that is like, oh my God, look how sharp that is. We're getting some weird AI kind of artifacts above digital noise above here, 
and then we're getting this is super sharp here on this tiny little piece and that tiny little piece and then it just drifts into a blur and it drifts into a blur down here too as well like that is completely out of focus but yet that's pin sharp that's pin sharp that's pin sharp these tiny little sections are pin sharp there's something weird going on here that is pin sharp but you know it's like you can see this is out of focus that's in focus but this is actually closer to the camera than that is so that just doesn't make sense in my head when I'm looking at it. It just doesn't make logical sense. So um, it's one of the things I'm struggling with in this. It's just not as natural. Whereas when we look at the DxO Pure Raw 2 results, you can quite clearly see everything looks natural. So what it all boils down to here is the edit results in Topaz Photo AI are sharper. Now they took considerably longer. I'm gonna put the editing times down below because I still haven't counted it as of yet to see how much of a difference there is in both the automatic edit in Topaz Photo AI with the manual edit in Topaz Photo AI. And then we're gonna look at DxO Pure Raw too. These times are very important because if you're batch editing 150 photographs from a wildlife shoot or from an event or from a wedding you could have four or five hundred photographs if you're shooting in a very dark church and you're shooting a long telephoto lens and you can't use flash because you don't want to be distracting from the ceremony or the priest doesn't allow it or the couple don't want it then you're going to have to shoot at incredibly high isos and you could have three four five hundred photographs to process so if you're having to do all those individually on top as photo ai that's going to add a massive amount of time onto you i suppose i like, I, I'm a fast photographer. I take my photographs quickly. I edit my photographs incredibly quickly. I generally fly through most photographs in under two minutes. Yes, under two minutes, which I know is criminal. People laugh at me, but I'm a firm believer of trying to get it as right as possible in camera. And if you can do that, you do not need to spend the time editing your photographs. And while people say, oh my God, I could edit that photograph so much better than you did there. I'm thinking, look, that's brilliant, but you're not my customer. You're not the person I'm hoping to sell photographs to. I can also sit down, I could spend two or three hours editing a photograph, but that's not the point. My time is valuable to me. I want to spend the time out taking photographs, not sitting here at my cursing desk or my editing desk. And you know, anything that can make life better for me, make it faster and get me the results I want quicker, I'm gonna love. And um, I am, for want of a better word, absolutely kicking myself that I haven't been using DxO Pure Raw 2 all along. So um, yeah, it, it's it's no part of my workflow. It's as simple as that. It is no part of my workflow. Now, if I'm shooting at ISO 64, ISO 100, I'm not gonna be going near it. Just being straight up and honest with you. But if I am shooting at any form of a higher ISO, I am definitely just going to process those files through that straight away. So um, I suppose for me personally, I would see DxO Pure Raw 2 as being a fantastic bit of equipment for us photographers. Um, not knocking or mocking Topaz Photo AI in any way, shape or form. Do not get me wrong. I would love to see massive competition in all these editing platforms because once that happens, that means us, yes, both you and me, we are both winning because once the equipment gets better, it means we're getting better editing software. We're getting better results. There's more competition, which means the prices might drop and companies keep pushing themselves forward. So it's, it's brilliant news for everyone. So come on, Topaz, knock it out of the park. Get those edits as good as I did manually, just super quickly there now, in the automatic mode. And I, for one, am going to be delighted because that's going to push DxO. It's going to push Luminar and Skylum. It's going to push push on one it's going to push all these editing platforms to create better better editing tools for us which is going to save us time so that's huge from my perspective anyway um what do you think which one is better for you and would you say oh my god topaz photo ai is like 200 times better or did you think i should really be trying dxo pure raw 2 and if you want to try dxo pure raw 2 now is a good time to do it i have a link down below in the description too as well for a free trial so you can check that out see what you think and i know for one dxo are absolutely convinced once you try it you're not going back and i can see why i, I genuinely can so um Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like, comment and share. And I'm sorry I haven't posted anything recently. I was dying with one of those viral flu infections. 
and took me like two and a half weeks to get over it. But I'm back now. And oh, yes, while I was missing, I completely lost my voice. I had no voice for a couple of days. So I'm sure my wife loved it, but that's beside the point. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching again, guys, and uh, see you out there.